Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave and welcome to the future. It's Friday, wishing you a very happy, very special and very cryptocurrency Friday. As always, want to be wishing the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest, as we say over here in Crown's Crypto Cave. So of course, let's get into live scene, waste no more time as Bitcoin has, well, done pretty much nothing new since the uh, since that monthly close. By the way, happy March 1st. Oh my God, time is flying once again. It is the third month of 2019 already. We're already one fourth through. This is insane. What the fuck? Where is my life going? But let's get on to the charts right over here. And as you can see, Bitcoin closing a nice, do you, what do you want to call it? Do you want to call it some some variation of a doji? Just basically a bodyless dildo on not high volume, not low volume, just kind of right in the midst of this all, of the whole picture. And overall, very, very much no change of the, even the, I guess I've been reading this as the mini picture. There's the, there, there's the, there's the micro picture, the mini picture, and then the macro picture. And then the super macro picture. And overall, as long as we're above this yellow 21 exponential at 3750 and below uh, this 89 cyan exponential right over here at 3950, nothing's really changed from that medium time frame perspective. As long as Bitcoin's within that realm, yes, overall, I am a little bit leaning to the bear side, but it is unchanged essentially as far as that goes. Now, that also means that if Bitcoin gets back above 3950, I immediately do get quite. I don't want to say quite bullish, but I get I I would be looking for another run towards the prior high of 4200 and probably even beyond to maybe even 43, 44, something like that. But for now, obviously that's well and far away. Just kind of describing where those where those kind of triggers do indeed lie. My bias while we're in this range is certainly to the downside with 39 3750 being that critical support. So as long as Bitcoin's above there, is it appropriate to be you know like directional short? Uh, at least for myself, no. Again, this is not financial advice. Not financial advisor. Blah 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 blah. But <laughs> just have to be very careful with the way that I relate these ideas. So, of course, uh, we actually do have the yellow 21 exponential officially crossing the green 55 exponential moving average right over here, which in the last few over the last year since Bitcoin switched around the market cycle, that actually has been an indication of kind of like the last ditch attempt of that rally. The last time that we actually that, that we actually even have an example of this uh, of this exponential moving average cross happening was right here where they, they fake. They basically faked out across to the upside. You had one massive green dildo and then boom. Boom, red dildo party all the way back down to the low side of this range. Then before that, you know, your cross right over here took this thing from 7,400 to 8,400, the last ditch attempt, the last, you know, of the Mohicans of this rally. But eventually, once we broke back down below, broke back the mountain down below the 21 exponential, the yellow moving average right here at 7,500, it was straight back down to the low side of the range. And then, of course, the time before that, happening right over here, getting the last kind of grasp of this uh, of this rally, and then again, leading on to the inevitable downfall to the lows of the range. So again, that is something that I do have my minds on my mind's eye right now. The question is, is do we get that next sort of breath of a rally or do we fall down below the the uh the the 21 right here it's or just more colloquially said 3750 uh, i think a little bit maybe even a little bit easier seen on a four hour total time frame perhaps even better seen on the other altcoins actually but basically you can see a very obvious support trend line coming in right here I don't have it marked in right now just because there's too many lines already, but uh, but 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 we do have this resistance trend line right here, 38.50, and then this more preliminary support trend line right here. If you really want to tighten these things up, which yes, we I did take a few trades off of yesterday. I believe I showed that during the live stream yesterday, taking a short at 38.50 on this rejection, and then actually uh, taking some back in at low 38 numbers. So again, you know, a nice little easy scalp. But as far as you know, as far as the overall range, nothing's really changed. So that's why I'm only in scalp mode. I'm not in. I'm not in directional trade mode. Even if we break this uh, this support right here at 37, 8, 3790, essentially, um, you know, I I mean, still 3750 is is the big support to break. Uh, so it's like, how much edge is there really on a trade like that? Not so much anymore. And if you do want to be super specific with this, you could say that we are kind of you know wedging ourselves into essentially a descending triangle right here, a very ugly one. It's not certainly not perfect. Something like this would look about right. Um, I think it's a little bit more visually apparent on Mr. Buterol, which we'll get into in just a bit, which actually does have a cleaner chart. But yeah, you can kind of see it right here. You do have a pretty nasty exponential moving average cross right here, which is being respected with that rejection on that run to 3,900. Just a massive hunt either which way is what that kind of looked like. But as long as we're below all major moving averages on this time frame, I believe this is a four hour. Yeah, I am. You know, I, I would be leaning to the downside just based off that. But overall, if you do break above 3,850, there is a nice trade to be made to the upside. 3,950 is next on the table. That's what I'd be looking for. And again, that would have confluence with 
the made with with kind of the semi bigger picture as 39.50 very 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 important for the bulls as long as we're below there i am i am more short term bearish now i say that and actually i'm going to show something I'm going to show something that kind of supersedes that, but we won't have confirmation on this until the end of the day. And I'm going to go on over here to the three-day dollar time frame and show this. Uh, I'm going to I'm actually going to pull up Bitstamp and this yellow 20-minute exponential moving average right here. As you can see, we are printing a massive long-legged Doji at the current moment in time. Obviously, this has another like 16 hours to go on this three-day dollar before it gets set in stone. It will be set in stone tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. But if we do close below this yellow 21 exponential, I become immediately bearish. More importantly, though, if we close above it, which is currently 3805, I would be looking for another run towards the prior highs, actually. I, I would. And this supersedes everything else now because the monthly did not really give an indication of, of a more safe trade. So now it's going to come down to the next highest time frame closing as soon as, which is the three-day total time frame right here. Um, so again, you know, in the last year, same sort of a deal as what we just saw with the daily cross. But if you just look at this yellow 21 exponential moving average, uh, and I scroll back to the, to, to the past here, you can see that each and every time that we've gotten above it, that has been like the last of, of the last of the last of the rally. And then once we broke, and then more importantly, once we broke back below it, that was a return to the overall lows of the range. So let's just kind of back test it right here. Again, we're above it for just, you know, a couple a couple of dildos and then major down. And then over here, we're above it for actually about a week and a half, two weeks, and then major down. And again, once you break the 21 to the downside, it's straight down. Um, same thing over here, getting it even more precisely, you know, staying above it for what is this about a couple of weeks, but once we break it, just major down all the way from 10,000 to 6,000. And then of course, even better over here, getting the double top of 12,000. Um, and then breaking it, and then all the way down to the prior end, end of your uh, of, of your range at six thousand from twelve thousand. So again, funnily enough, though, on this example, we do see a double top, right? You'd see this first area, which we break the yellow twenty minute exponential moving average right here, pop down, we get continuation, which we actually already have seen in the current scenario. Um, and then bounce off the red tensile moon average, get back, regain, regained the uh, the 21 exponential, and then break it on the next on the next stab. So it did get right back to the prior high, which is what interests interests me about this, and that's what we're kind of seeing over here. Is essentially, are we going to fight for it or not? And as of the current moment in time, it is fighting. It, it is certainly fighting, no doubt about that. But uh, if we do end above, I would be looking for another move, probably to the prior high. If we end below, then I'd be looking for more continuation down, probably to the low side of this range, you know, 3,400. Um, so that would be, you know, that's that's the highest time frame. Uh, any of the soonest that has the most weight as of the current moment in time. We do have, we do see the green 55 exponential rapidly approaching, rapidly flirting with the 377 exponential moving average right here. Very, very nasty. If that were to, to indeed cross, um, what do we have on the two day, two day stokes, I believe are down and they're not fully confirmed down just yet. I need to see today's two. We actually do set in a no that another two day dildo today. So. Um, if that, if, if that's further coming down, I mean, this has had pretty good confluences for the last year or so as well. Every, each and every time that we've crossed down in the more, you know, in the bullish control zone, it has led on to some major, some major dumps. Again, the last time was over here. This was early August going from 8,400 to 6,000. This, this time over here was your, was your early May dump from 10,000 to 6,000. This time over here was your, you know, your, your, your February of last year, uh, double top at 12,000 that we looked at as well. So again, um, this is not confirmed is technically not confirmed today if we were to actually shoot up right now it would get undone but for now it is you know it, it is kind of looking like it but then again on the two day little time frame right here we are holding up healthily above this red tensile moon average it kind of looks like it to, to me the two day looks like it wants to come back up and test the green 55 it's just a personal opinion so again that's why i want to be agnostic in these ranges i'm not doing anything except for essentially scalping ranges but even that is not what i want to be focusing on right now because overall it, the range is getting so tight that it's gonna it's 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 extremely likely to burst. Um, I would say I'd say probably before end of day if it's going to. So again, um, that's what I'd be looking at over there. Let's see what the 12 hour saying. I haven't really looked at that. Um, 12 hour stokes are actually up, and that's and all of our medium time frames are kind of up right now. Actually, 12 hour all the way. I'm sure to six hour perhaps as well. Yeah, six hours healthily up. What about five hour? Five hours down. Yeah, so it's six through 12 are down, and then daily and above are, are all down. Daily still coming down right here, and same thing for the daily. By the way, each and every time that it's gotten gotten above this area for the last year, that's been your major dumps. I mean, perfectly getting there. You know, again, it's the same the same area last uh, early 
early September dump from 74 to 6,000, uh, early August dump from 84 to 6,000, early May dump from 10,000 to 6,000, and your February double top of last year, getting it even more precise than what we just looked at, actually. And same thing with the jewel as well, getting it even better than all three of those. And still, you know, showing the same signature that as soon as we get above this 80 market, which is not the right way to be using the jewel, by the way, um, but it is a way that you can gauge relative strength. You can see that the last few times that we've gotten in here, we're all major market tops. So again, with these with these sort of signatures coming into the market, that does not mean that Bitcoin can't get another run at that 3950 resistance. And I probably would be a seller on the first pass but the second that Bitcoin gets above there, the second that Bitcoin actually closes, you know, a two hour dildo above there, I would be looking for continuation pretty much onto 4,200. Um, so a nice trade to be made either which way. I mean, you know, that's, I mean, that's almost 10% trade nowadays, which is just insane. It's just a testament to how low we are in dollar valuation, which actually offers up the insane capacity for opportunity right now. Um, anyways, uh, okay, so we do see that the daily is still trending below the exponential right here. What about the two day? Did we lose? Did we lose it just yet? No, we have not. We're actually still above it. So again, not too much to make out of that. But, um, you know, we can see that the oscillators are starting to switch around. Uh, very low time frames are all down as well, or except for the hourly. Hourly is actually up right now. Hourly Stokes and hourly RSI not telling us all that much about the price action. Hourly RSI is a more bearish signature on this. Uh, we actually do have some hidden bearish divergence playing out between here and here. But it's, um, I think that that's already played out probably. Uh, two hour stokes down, um, as you can see over here, and your three hour stokes are down, and your four hour stokes are freshly crossing down as well, which are actually good, about to get another tick in the next three minutes and seven seconds. So it's likely to progress, unless if this dildo starts, you know, working its way up, which it actually is starting to rally into the end of this. But again, four minutes to go. How much damage can you do in four minutes? Well, it's cryptocurrency land, so a lot actually. But four hour RSI still using the exponential as resistance. And you can see again, major, major, major um, hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point as it closes ever so slightly lower, but you're also just getting higher in the overall context of a downtrend. Well, what does that tell you? It tells you that the bulls are using more power to get less essentially. So again, you know, while we're trending below the exponential right here or or above, it's gonna it's gonna come right down to the wire. Let's go see what BitMexico is doing right now. They're us it usually has the most clean read. It's actually above. So again, um, two minutes to go, we're, we'll be able to watch this one together. But overall, Jewel is not saying, Jewel is completely neutral right now. It would actually be setting up for a more bullish bounce if if anything um but initially would want to come down so again that's why the range you know the, the the greater range that b uh really needs to be respected right now again 3750 if, as long as that's holding it's really difficult to to be directional bearish although overall when i look at a chart like this this is very constructive the volume signature is is that of of consolidation and this is likely to just be you know one massive consolidation related to each other. I think best seen on perhaps a three-day dollar time frame on uh, on Bitstamp or or GDAX or any of the exchanges that that trade against uh, or sorry represent their 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 volume in coins traded. But you can see this nice orderly drop off in volume going from left to right, uh, especially on this rejection right over here. As these moving averages kind of catch up to the price action, I would be saying that that is a very clear indication that overall. This is consolidation. I know a lot of people people are, tr are bringing out the y the Wyckoff schematics once again, which is just it shows a great capacity for dissonance within this market. If you know Wyckoff, understand that Wyckoff takes years and years to master. And overall, even if this is a Wyckoff, we don't have enough information to even judge it. If, if it if it were to be a Wyckoff, we actually don't even have enough information to judge it. You could maybe make the argument based off of the fact that we would be maybe in like the first like phase ish area but uh but overall i, I think it's I, I think it's it would be way too early to call people who are talking about that are uh, typically people who bought somewhere right over here is what it is what it is what it typically works out to and i don't say that to be arrogant i don't say that to be mean but overall understand that a lot of the time some people can sound very 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 convincing as they did at six thousand with with these arguments that have no real basing like 6,000 can't break because the Chinese miners or whatever, the, the, the mining cost or 6,000 can't break because that's the lowest we've been and you know, it, it's it's not going lower, bro. Or 6,000 can't break because they're calling a fucking Wyckoff over here as well. And it's kind of the same people saying the same thing down here. Uh, while I do think Bitcoin is closer to bottoming out than not, um, I mean, fucking obviously that's a nonsense statement. Uh, I still think um, as far as looking for major markers of, of a market bottoming, it does not have them. And there we go. Bitcoin's rallying to the close of this uh, four hour total. There it is. There's a close. And let's see what's going on uh, down around here. Yeah, close that one decently. Um, 
Probably going to get another test of this uh, yellow 21 exponential, I'd imagine, at 38.14. But if we get above there, you know, it's probably going to test the upside of the range, I'd imagine. It's probably probably another test at uh, 38.40, 38.50, something like that. But again, still within the range as long as we're playing, you know, between those uh, b between those supports and resistances. So really nothing's changed. What are our, what are our oscillators doing right now? Four-hour stokes still coming down. Uh, still coming down a bit. So overall, um, yeah. Basically, just, I mean, 30 minutes looking bullish, baby. 30 minutes stokes, cross back up. It's going to the goddamn moon, baby. Um, but yeah, you know, I did want to get that out because I do see a lot of that kind of talk going around. And, um, and you know, if you're, if you're tuning into content like this, I'm happy to share my views on that because I actually have spent some time learning Wyckoff. And, I, and, I, and while Wyckoff is very powerful, it's, it, it's, it's damn good at what it does, but it's really fucking dangerous in the hands of of the wrong person. So that's what I can say about that. And and as you can see, I very rarely talk about Wyckoff cuz I myself don't think that I'm I don't think I'm really qualified to be like an expert, but I but I do know enough to kind of say that this is unlikely to be what you would be looking for um as far as Wyckoff goes. Or as of the current moment in time, we need like another half year of evidence um and then maybe and then maybe maybe but uh, but yeah. Anyways, uh, as far as the higher time frames go, you know nothing's really changed here. Uh, weekly still uh, below the uh, the purple 200 exponential moving average and uh, and above the 200 the pink 200 simple moving average. As you're a longer term time frame uh, investor, I suppose you could say those are the two areas that I'd be looking for for the more macro picture. As long as Bitcoin is opening and closing weekly totals below the purple 200 exponential moving average, it is extremely 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 unlikely that it is bottomed. Um, it could even close. It could even open and close above, or even get a wick above and then still close below. But if it opens and closes above, then I would drastically change my tune on Bitcoin. However, it would not be the it would not be the final nail in the coffin. There's two other things that I that that are actually more important for declaring a bear market over. Although that would really you know I'd actually I'd probably even take a long if we actually both open and close a weekly total above the purple 200 exponential moving average. Um, but uh, but by the same token, if you're on the macro picture, as long as we're within these, these two areas, all we're doing is just kind of wedging ourselves into this area. I know people are calling this an ascending triangle as well. I don't see it. I don't understand where these things come from. It's very bizarre. Uh, an ascending triangle typically is a bullish continuation pattern as well, not a reversal pattern, which just, again, shows the massive capacity for fucking dissonance with people that want to see something, but... It's not fucking there. It's just not fucking there. And again, I want to be bullish. I do this as a living. I do this as a fucking living. So my life becomes infinitely easier when Bitcoin turns around bullish. And believe me, I mean, during the next bull market, because I am a long-term believer in Bitcoin, I'm going to be doing like less videos and probably more playing video games, something like that maybe, um, which will be fun in and of itself. But uh, but hey, as of the current moment in time, very little has changed. Now, Bitcoin has found support off the red 10, some moon average down around here, but it is sloped to the downside, which I do not like. Um, of course, if we do move up past that 38.50 level, this thing is likely to hold, and we are likely to get another run at this uh, at the 200 exponential. So again, you can see it within the within the confines of here. There are some bullish things on the weekly. Weekly stokes are about to get out of the critical zone, which I really like. But also notice this: that uh, we can make a nice trend line here, right? And we'd we'd be right at the resistance of this trend line that has been governing the weekly for literally almost a year since May of 2018, or how I don't know, it's like 10 months. It's close enough. Is my pro is my point? Anyways, um, you know, but 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 overall, Stokes would look okay. What about weekly RSI? Weekly RSI is, I mean, this is a bearish RSI, but uh, we are trending above the exponential. So there, I mean, you know, trying to trying to find uh, things for the bulls right now. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, overall, as far again, like I always like to repeat. And I know this is boring. I know that this is kind of annoying, but uh, but but it's good to repeat at least for myself because well. <laughs> Maybe I maybe I forget a little bit too easily. Uh, there, the, of the five, six, seven, or eight things that I look for to to denote to be demonstrative of a major market cycle bottoming, I don't see it in Bitcoin right now. It doesn't mean that it can't happen, but uh, but as far as I'm concerned, as because these things have not happened, I roll with the assumption that it's bearish until proven otherwise. And when I say proven otherwise, I mean the things that we just spoke about now, like the like the weekly getting above opening and closing a weekly total above the purple 200 exponential moving average at 4100. If it can do that, that would drastically change my tune. The second and uh, and and significantly more important thing would be the 21 exponential on the on the monthly. If whoa my god, look at these. These are incredibly close right now. That's that's not good. 
that's not good. Um, <clears throat> the red 10 symbol and the yellow 20 max potential, very, 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 very close to each other right now. Uh, this to me looks like consolidation. Look at the volume signature. We looked at it on lower time frames, the price structure and the volume signature, very, 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 very corrective in nature, which does imply consolidation as these are consolidating along here, even though that the 55 exponential was regained as these two moving averages approach each other, that is likely going to be the impetus if they do officially cross, which will happen, will happen if we fail to get back above uh, 5,200 in the next month, um, then that will be the impetus for turning up the sell program and the sell intensity on a lot of these, uh, a lot of the bots and algorithms in the world. So if this is consolidation as these two approach each other, and then that crosses, that's going to be the sparking factor. That's going to be the catalyst likely for this break into the downside. Um, so again, uh, it's going to, it's going to be a long month, but I'd imagine that as long as Bitcoin is below 5,200, these will cross, these will cross by, uh, what's the month after March? It's April, April. There you go. April. Um, so again, keep your eyes on that. Obviously going to take a long time. We just set in another monthly. I'm curious what the monthly says right now. Monthly soak still coming healthily down. They can definitely stay down there for a while. Sorry. They can stay down there for a while. Just like they stayed up here for a while. They stayed up here for literally literally almost two years. I mean, this was December, 2016. So read that at start of 2017. And then, and then basically, oh, sorry, one year to, to January of 2018, literally one fucking year above this area. And the last time that we were below this area was February of, um, of 2015, staying below there until September of 2015. We've been, we've been down here for, for about uh, three months now. Um, so, so definitely getting a little bit more mature, but overall, you know, you do see that the monthly RSI is treading right around the bearish control zone, the edge of the bearish control zone. We actually have gotten the lowest RSI reading on Bitcoin on the monthly ever. Uh, that was in January, start of January, but I do want to bring up some as well. I do want to bring up the, whoops, it's probably best to do it like this. Let's bring up the accumulation distribution indicator. I like to, I like to look at this one each and every time that uh, we get a new monthly as I'm curious where this guy's ticking and you actually do see this thing really, really lessen its slope right here. So this is another good indication that I'd, that that would kind of tell me that the bear market is a lot closer to being done with than it is not. So I am not in like super super bear mode, looking for like significantly. You know, it's I mean, it's it's one thing. To, it's it's cool. It's sexy to catch like the next downwards trade. But overall, I do want to keep my eyes open for you know the big opportunity, which would be which would be the market actually bottoming as this is getting, this is getting pretty mature when you actually are, when you, when you actually do have a positive, positive slope, that's actually quite a good thing. Um, but as you can see over here, you have, you have a one little fake out and then, and then down again, even deeper, which that's what I'd be afraid of. But if, as you can see, we are, you know, we're, we're pretty mature into this market right now. Um, so if you are a longer term time frame person and, and just overall in a more realistic sense, I mean, the next big trade is going to be the upside most likely. I mean, again, I don't believe that Bitcoin is going to die long term, but, uh, uh, I'm also not saying that that trade happens anytime soon. I think that this is this whole segment, this whole piece of the market cycle is going to take, you know, I mean, this could take the whole year. Uh, again, I mean, just shit. I mean, when, when you look at the last market cycle for Bitcoin from 2014 to 2015, even after Bitcoin bottomed, it went sideways for a year, doing nothing for literally a year. So there is no rush as far as I'm concerned. Um, but if you do think that Bitcoin's about to go sideways here for a year and then pop back up, I mean, that would be a possibility. Um, that would be a possibility. But I think that I think that's less likely. I think that Bitcoin does take another leg down. Um, anyways, uh, if that were to happen, again, don't listen to my opinion on that. Listen to the technical analysis or don't listen at all because this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> <laughs> but what I can say is that uh, this pink 200 simple moving average right here, uh, if that actually does break, I would be looking for that next leg down. Uh, check this out. Let me put on the volume profile. You do see very low market acceptance all the way from uh, from from basically the pink 200 simple moving average right here to the mid 2000s, which I've, if I put on my drawing tools, you can see I've marked out this nice blue box territory right here and come see in the area between about 2300 and 2600, which is the 886 Fibonacci retracement. If I take that off, you can see that we actually did bottom out at the uh, on the 886 Fibonacci retracement retracement in 2014 over here. And of course, uh, we do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around the area. The volume profiles we just saw and the BLX index will show that the 377 exponential on the weekly is also coming around that area as well. And you can also see that the monthly support is indeed right around 2,500 to actually 2,430 now. Um, but uh, we have actually not gotten the next tick on this guy just yet. So not necessarily too, uh, too, uh, not necessarily apparent right now. 
Anyways, um, back on the lower time frames for Bitcoin. Yeah, those are the things that I'm looking for. And how did I get onto that discussion? Yeah, I got into that discussion because I was talking about the three things that I need to see for Bitcoin to do to, to completely change my mind because the six or seven things that I look for to, to be demonstrative of Bitcoin bottoming have not happened. If you want the full on explanation with examples of that, of that explanation, go check out the playlist in my YouTube titled Long Term Analysis. It'll go through that in great depth with examples, all that good shit. It's also a fucking hour long, so I'm not going to do it on this video right now. But uh, but 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 for like the true chart nerds, definitely go check that out. Um, and I'll just kind of quickly talk about them right now without examples or anything like that. Very, 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 very briefly, not doing it real, real justice. But the volume that I want to see at a major market market cycle low, not present. The time spent at a major market cycle low, not present. The return to the market, re the return to the current low within a few percentage, not the not the personality that Bitcoin has deployed in the past on how it plays out its major market cycles lows. The reaction off the lows also not consistent with the way that Bitcoin plays off its lows. And of course, our external factors like the MVT signal also not signaling low, which has been perfect. The historical volatility rank, which has been perfect, also not signaling low. And of course, the longs and shorts being quite literally the opposite of what I'd expect them to be coming off of a major mark cycle low and the sentiment indicators like the fear and greed index. So I don't know how many that is, but it's enough. It's enough. And when you're zero for fucking eight, it's, it's not good enough um, is my point. Um, so again, I'll, I'll spare you the details of going through, uh, any any far through, uh, further with that. Let's go check out GBDC. GBDC closed the day at 4:44. Very, 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 very strange chart. Bounced off immediately. Big up open on the day, and uh, and then closing a little bit down. Uh, last last down tick was a rejection of this of this moving average cross right here. You can see. Well, not the last tick, but the whole day was. Uh, I think that this is maybe best seen on the daily. You know, the daily looks like a rejection of the green 55 exponential and uh, in back below the red 10 moon average. So it would, you know, would imply some more downwards pressure, very long wicks to the upside. We do sell of our daily stokes coming down. So I would be bearish off that daily RSI just came back and retested the exponential, very normal shit, but overall just also in between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone. So overall I'd be bearish off that. Um, do we have anything to look at on like a medium time frame, like a four hour, four hour stoke still coming down, um, four hour RSI not really telling us anything. Uh, overall, I mean, it just looks like another rejection now, doesn't it? Uh, overall, you know, I would not put it past it to retest this downwards trend line at 423 now, would be, or sorry, 427. Yeah, 427 and a half. Um, as long as it's above that, though, it's it's you know it's it's hard to be bearish. Is that's just a retest of a broken trend line, which is pretty common. But the fact that it's come back twice already, if it came back a third time, it would be very likely for it to break. And if it does break, then this would be considered a breakout failure. And I would be extremely bearish off that. Anytime that you see a, a failed breakout, it is usually really, 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 really fucking bad. And I'd be looking for a move back down to the range of the lows and probably beyond. It would probably break this guy right here. Uh, let's go check out CMEs as well. CMEs are, are a little bit easier to read um, as well. And you do see four hour stokes on these guys having a fresh cross down. Um, not really. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit more of an obvious uh, descending triangle here now, isn't it? Something like this, right? Something like that, uh, where we're testing the top side of the resistance once again. But my point is with this guy is that actually we've come up and filled the gap um, on the daily, which I know a lot of people have been messaging, messaging me about this. Uh, but hey, you know, when it comes down to it, the daily takes precedence. And it, this is the art of technical analysis, not the fucking science. So people are like, okay, but crown, it didn't fill, it didn't fill within five dollars. What the fuck? What the fuck? It's like, okay, calm down. This is the art of technical analysis. We just want to find out where the liquidity is. When you see a rejection like that, that's obviously getting played off of it. It's very visually apparent on the daily. Calm down. Calm down. Uh, but you see, you do see a very clear rejection right here, filling the gap uh, off of this base, basically bull trap right over here. So. As long as this guy's again below 3,900 on CME futures, I would be overall, you know, overall looking for some more downside. We got daily Stokes still coming down. Uh, we got daily RSI just popping back up and testing the exponential right here so far. Um, if it does get back above that 55, though, I would be looking for a run to really like 4,300. I, I really would. 4,250 to 4,300, probably 4,300. Um, but def definitely getting back to, to your prior highs at 4,200. But, you know, my personal opinion is get, get all the way to 43. Um, anyways, uh, so that is uh, th uh, that is that on CME futures. You do see a little bit more of an actual uh, of, of an actual formation going on here, where we actually did. If you want to represent it like this, we actually did take out the high, or sorry, we we actually take out did take out the resistance, but getting faded right back below and then rejected here is not a good sign. It's not a good sign. So again, you know, major support right here at 36. Uh, let's just call it 3600. Uh, if 3600 breaks, then very, 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 very likely to return to the range lows. Probably even lower than that. 
Um, difficult area though, very difficult area. So again, you know, that's, let's see if there's, is there anything in the four hour? Four hours not really telling us too much. Four hour also does are coming down, I suppose. What about four hour uh, RSI? A mm, little bit of hidden bearish divergence there, but I think it's already played out. Very difficult to play these type of ranges. Anyways, uh, okay, so we, t we spoke about enough. Uh, we spoke we spoke enough about Bitcoin, except we should go check out the longs and the shorts. Again, great imbalance between the longs and the shorts. We have over 24,000, 24 and a quarter uh, open longs versus 18,000 open shorts uh, with how many of these guys are hedged. Uh, almost 2,000, so really 16 and a quarter. This is the lowest I've seen in a very long time. Again, each and every time that the shorts have gone into this area, and I see a lot of people talking about this now, which is cool, but it's also like... <laughs> done the research man um looking at this red box area right here every time that the shorts that the total shorts uh, open has gotten down in this area it has matched up with major major dumps major fucking dumps so you know th this this was your february double top at uh, twelve thousand last year uh this was your may top at ten thousand last year this was your early august dump from eighty four hundred to six thousand last year this was your drop from six thousand to three thousand uh last year and then once again we're in this range we spent a lot of time in this range you can see that we have spent we we put in time before it's not like it's not unheard of or anything like that but uh but each and every time that without fail that it's gotten into this red box territory that has matched up with major major dump ter major 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 dumps so or major tops, I suppose I could say. So again, I do want to have that in the back of my mind. I do want to look at the crypto fear and greed index where we actually ticked up to a 42 off a of 39 yesterday. Um, but again, the big news was it getting all the way to a 69, which is just a, an amazing number a uh, few days ago over the weekend on February 24th. Oh my God, it's been a fucking week. Isn't that insane? It, this felt like, like literally two days ago, but it's last week. What the fuck? What the actual fuck, man? Um, but again, this is the highest that has been in the last year, except for one other point, which was literally one year ago at 12,000. So people are more excited, more optimistic about Bitcoin. And Bitcoin, as we spoke about, have, has taken out none of the macro triggers. None of the macro triggers have been taken out. Again, even the even the weekly 200 exponential still not taken out, but people are more optimistic the other day when it was actually getting rejected from there than they were at any other point in time in the past year, which I would argue was, you know, you should be probably more optimistic when Bitcoin's at a higher price and still it technically has a chance. Um, so again, just another kind of underlying mark dynamic suggesting, well, hold your fucking horses. So that's what I'd be saying about that. Um, okay, cool. We've talked about that. We talked about that. Uh, let's go check out Mr. Buterall, Mr. Buttersworth over here at 139. Again, overall, Mr. Buttersworth in just kind of making out a massive, uh, massive, uh, what's it called, rising channel, bear flag, whatever you want to call it, typically a bearish distribution pattern. But these, this is likely going to take a long time. It did have its event yesterday night. So does gravity take over now? Well, as, uh, as history has suggested, I mean, it's going to take some time to figure it out, but uh, this to me does look like it's kind of on its last legs. I mean, do you want to redraw it like this? Do you want to redraw it like this? I don't really care how you redraw it. Technically, I, I would I would be pretty adamant about drawing it like this just because that was high volume dildo right there. But um, overall, just, you know, kind of wedging itself into this, uh, this triangle of some shape. Do you want to call it a symmetrical triangle? I don't care what you call it. Um, we have a very obvious support right around here, right around 138. We have a very obvious resistance right here at around 141 and a half. Whichever one breaks first, that's going to be your next big direction. If you break to the upside, I'm looking towards 152 and a, 152 and a quarter. If we break to the downside, I'm looking down here at a 131 and a quarter, something like that. So again, overall, that's what I'm thinking. Um, doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Yes, nasty exponential moving average cross right here seems to be getting respected as the 21 and the 55 gain divergence away from each other, which does tell me that the trend is getting stronger. And the four hour Stokes did just freshly cross the downside as well. So momentum is on the bear side. Four hour RSI uh, snaking around in the bearish control zone, printing some hidden bearish divergence there as well. Um, but again, need I, I need to see some break. All this is mental masturbation until that happens as I, as I delete that because it's no longer relevant. Um, anyways, uh, higher time frames for Mr. Beater are pretty damn set. You know, th that, that last Sunday was, was a clear rejection of clear front run of the pink 200 some moon average. More importantly though, if, miss, if Mr. Beater all does break down, I would be looking for a move overall all the way down to about 118, just basically the, the 618 Fibonacci retracement, which would be a retest of this trend line going all the way back from May of last year 
at at eight hundred dollars down to where we currently are now, which which Mr. Bureau actually did break out of before. So I'm very keen to see that if if it does break back down once again, I'd want to see this actually guide it on the way down. Funnily enough, this would actually be a governing force on the way down, and I'd imagine that uh, if and when Mr. Bureau you know actually does bottom, it's probably gonna be somewhere along this trend line. Uh, just, just, just as an initial, like an initial premonition, that's probably the wrong, wrong word to use. It sounds like I'm trying to be some sort of a fucking, uh, you know what it is. Um, like a, like a soothsayer, but yeah, you know, if, if we were to bottom out at like 60 bucks, that would suggest May of this year. So a couple months or end of May, you know, if we were, if we were to bottom out at 80 bucks, like a lot of people think, uh, that would suggest, um, and, uh, middle of April, you know, you can kind of like go uh, find a way forwards here. In fact, this trend line pretty much goes all the way back to the, to, to the ultimate high. Um, if we do the same thing in Bitcoin, you actually see that that did govern it in the past for the, on the way down. So that's kind of why I'm mentioning it. Anyways, uh, that's what I'd be looking at right over here. Again, you know, if you think that, the, and, and the thing is, if you think of Bitcoin's Wyckoff, then you'd want to see that replicated on the other top market caps, like Mr. Bit, like um, like Mr. Buterol and uh, and Mrs. Litecoin. And this is not. This is this is quite literally not. Um, I don't see how you could make. I, I I don't really see how you can make the argument for it here. Yeah, I, I don't think I see it. Not yet, at least. If if we go on for another six months in this range and just fill this out, maybe put in a little a slightly lower low or retest the low, that could that could be a potential. But again, I don't really see it. Don't I, I don't really see it. Um, let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. How's she doing, Mrs. Litecoin? Actually, Mrs. Litecoin's hanging it really high right now. She's whoa. What is she, what is she doing? Hey, don't you know everyone else is sick right now? Mrs. Litecoin's breaking out. Mrs. Litecoin wants to go higher. She, I mean, quite literally broke out yes, or, or on the last four-hour dildo. Retested this, uh, looked like looking like it's fine. Um, I don't know what's going on here, but uh, I don't see too much stopping it from 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 about a couple bucks higher, forty-eight bucks, maybe forty-eight, forty-eight and a half dollars. Uh, four-hour Stokes still headed up. What about our daily? Here's what the daily is saying. Daily printed bearish divergence, but I think that's played out already. Uh, yeah, resistance right here at about that forty-seven dollar, forty-eight dollar range. Uh, retesting the exponential on the RSI. Very interesting, though. Very, very interesting. Yeah, Mrs. Litecoin's in, her, in a league of her own right now. Um, again, a lot of, lot of resistance overhead, still in the formation of some sort of a rising wedge-ish, uh, typically a bearishly resolved pattern. But hey, man, if we start opening and closing daily doubles above this uh, $50, 50 mark, I, I'd probably start to change around my opinion on this. Um, being, being the most resilient is, is a good thing. Definitely a good thing. And as you can see on the daily, like clearly using the pink 200 simple moving average as support, none of the other top market caps are anywhere near that moving average, like nowhere fucking near. So this is um, very interesting to me. Very fucking interesting. Uh, per perhaps, perhaps, a, perhaps the marker of things to come as Bitcoin does tick up a little bit here as well. Huh. Yeah. It's, I mean... I mean, Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Litecoin is all the way up at around what would be around 3,900 uh, if you would equate that to Mr. Bitcoin. I mean, but then again, look at where the 200 simple moving average is on Bitcoin in comparison to Litecoin. It's, it's all the way here at $5,044. Kind of far away. Kind of far away, man. Um, okay, let's go check out the other uh, the other top shit coins. Uh, Zcash, we got Electric Coin, Zcash, Zecco Cash, whatever the fuck it is. Looking bearish, losing the 21 exponential, looking like it wants to come down. Daily Stoke still down. Daily RSI still down. Uh, Bcash, we got Zcash, Bcash. Uh, same thing, literally the same fucking thing. Wow, hidden bearish divergence all the way through. Tron Cash, what do we have on Tron Cash? Looking like, looking like it wants to come down as well. Sick puppy, getting rejected on the jewel resistance, getting rejected on the RSI exponential, getting also crossing the daily stokes down at the edge of the bearish control zone. Looks like he wants to come down as well. Uh, support right here at about 23.8 cent, but if that area fails, I'd be looking for a move down to 21 point, or sorry, 2.18 cent. Man, that's a hard number to even think of, conceive of. It's difficult. Um, Neo Cash, what the fuck's Neo Cash doing? Uh, still in this overall rising channel. EOS Cash, doing, I mean, the closest to Litecoin out of them all. Uh, let's go do my other chart for Ripple over here. Uh, Ripple, still within the confines of this ascending triangle. Not fucking good. Not fucking good. I mean, just a massive descending triangle, which does have a measured move pointing all the way down to about uh, actually 18 cents. I don't know if I don't know if it straight gets there. If it actually does break this area, I really don't like trading um, uh, Mr. Ripples. I mean, you see the same sort of thing going on right here. You had kind of like the same sort of uh, 
descending triangle, right? But that obviously broke the upside. It, it does all sorts of crazy things. Although this is not necessarily a descending triangle. This doesn't have the right volume signature. Uh, this this does, and it is acting like one so far. But hey, is uh, more importantly for Mr. Ripples, Mr. Ripples nipples. As long as you're below thirty four and a half cents, I I'd be overall bearish on it. The second that you get above thirty four and a half cents, though, probably have a nice run to forty cents at that point. Probably, I mean, very very likely. Very likely. Uh, what's Stellar Cash doing? What's Mr. Stellar Cash? Stellar got the groove back, baby. <laughs> I wish a Hajin Re video once on Stellar, and that's what he said. Um, let's see. Oh, we have a strong Stellar Rumen. Um, yeah, not looking too strong. Still being beat held in by this uh, eight and a half cent resistance right here. Hard chart to love. Uh, wow, that rejection was just so nasty. I mean, it's just you know, it's just another lower high is what we're doing. I mean, we even have a nice trend line here for me now, don't we? Something like that. Uh, governed by the green 55 exponential on the daily, you can see. Uh, 9.5 cent is the big area to beat. As long as you're below 9.5 cent, there's not really too much to be doing here. Uh, if you get above 9.5 cent, though, I would be looking for a move towards uh, the 11 cent rate region. Uh, there are, I mean, that one That one looks like it's, it just looks like it needs a bounce, you know? Uh, but hey, again, that's why I don't trade opinion. I trade technical analysis, and right now it's saying... <laughs> Be fucking careful. Not that I trade alts to begin with. Um, so anyways, going back on over here to Bitcoin, we can kind of wrap this bitch up. Um, and as far as the lower time frames go, more preliminary uh, supported resistance is 34, uh, sorry, 37.50, uh, 30, and 38.50, uh, respectively, for supported resistance. As long as, we're, as long as we're bouncing within there, nothing's really changed. If we break out to the downside below 37.50, I would be looking for a move down to uh, 3,600, uh, actually. Um, if that were to happen, basically test the the uh, the 0 0.5 Fibonacci retracement once again. Actually, it's a little bit above 3600, but uh, but at that point in time, I don't believe that we'd hold off this again. Uh, you know, maybe a small bounce, but overall, I'd be looking for a move down to the 620 at 3530, down all the way over here, which would basically be also meeting this rising trend line that's been governing our lows. You know, since this more uh, aggressive downside occurred, or or perhaps the bounce off it more more appropriately said. So again, if that were to happen, that's what I'd be looking for. By the same token, if Bitcoin breaks out above 3850 I would be looking for a move to 3950 but 3950 being a critical critical area to be demonstrative of okay as long as we're below there as long as we're below there I'm overall bearish and I would be actually looking for a short in this in this blue box territory between 39 and 3950 uh, if we get above there if we actually close a two-hour deal above 3950 I'd instantly become bullish towards probably a higher high over this guy at the very least I'd say 4150 but probably higher high to 4300 um, so again, that's going to do it for now, guys. I uh, hope this one finds you all well. another pleasurable Friday, early morning Friday speaking with you. I'm going to go work on some more options videos, which I'm really excited about. I'm going to be releasing them this weekend. They are very, 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 very beginner, but it's also because I've like when going over the basics, I realized, oh my God, there's so many moving parts here to get out that this is going to end up being a very long series with very short videos. So it will, you know, it, it'll be easy to digest at one point in time so that, you know, you can get through, okay, what, what is a Delta? What is a, you know, what is your Greeks? What are, what, what is premium mean? What is, you know, what does this mean? What does your persistent graphs look like? All this kind of good stuff, um, which I hope is going to be the best way to kind of get it out there. Anyways, no one's going to be interested in that to begin with because it's fucking options. So again, uh, hope this one finds you well, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. I wish you a happy, swell, awesome, whatever good superlative, superlative I can think of right now in my mind's eye. I'm wishing that for you right here, right now. We'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Perhaps I'll see you there. If not, well, have a great rest of your Friday. If, if so, then see you there. Take care.